YouTube, what the crap's going on? Air of Carthage back on the Bactria campaign. Hate that, that rhymes, but I guess that's just the way that it comes out. Um, so, you all may notice right off the bat, Air, this doesn't look the same. You did it again, you forgot to save your game, or you screwed it up, or whatever you want to accuse me of, having lost and then cheated, or whatever else. Um, what happened was I did forget to save my game. And it was uh, quite a few turns in after you, you all know that I had taken Armenia. So I forgot to save my game. I tried to play the campaign back to basically the same point. However, because I cannot control the AI, the AI took a slightly different twist. Pontus managed to survive. Yet nevertheless, Athens and um, Macedon are still pushing into uh, Asia Minor. And let's take a look at the uh, diplomacy so I can just show you a couple other things that um, changed. Well, Persia's still here, and I'm getting close to defeating them. And then uh, Armenia actually <coughs> still has a single army or something over here, I think. Let's tap out. I'm pretty sure they still have just like an army or a navy or something over here. Yeah, because that belongs to Macedon. So I, I defeated the Armenians in the exact same location <coughs> at Tushpa and Armavir. And Pontus took their last settlement, which was here at... Arsambosada, and um, right now Trapezos, I believe, has joined us. Yeah, so <clears throat> Trapezos wanted a military alliance with me, which was somewhat risky. And the reason I say that is because they're at war with a couple of people that I really didn't want to have hate me. So right here we have the, uh, I think these guys are the Cart Cartli, and uh, they don't like me now because of my, I mean, they don't like wildly dislike me, but they don't like me because of my uh, treaty with Trapezos, and then there's another little minor faction up here too, Ardhan, and I, I have a treaty with them for trade and stuff, so basically Ardhan doesn't hate me as bad, even though they don't like Trapezos, um, but the Kartli don't like me, and then Samandar I think just got looted by the Royal Scythians, they came back with an army that I wasn't able to defeat, uh, but it was just a looting, uh, the city remains in my control, albeit it's going to suffer some... Uh, penalty, but again, if I lose Samandar, it's not really my main concern. My main concern is getting rid of um, the Persians, which, as you can see, are going to challenge me here at Susa almost, uh, almost assuredly. And they have a pretty sturdy army of Thorax swords, Thorax pikemen, and my army here isn't overly large. Um, yeah, I'm trying to recruit some slingers there because I don't have any uh, skirmishers. Partheva is none too friendly towards me, but they have not declared war. Parthia and some of the other... Uh, nations around here are feeling friendly towards me. Uh, yeah, so all of these guys still friendly. Partheva kind of waning because they were allied with Persia. If I can finish the war with Persia and they don't declare with war with me, I might be able to pull it off. Uh, as you can see, Egypt is not real friendly with me, and of course Macedon and Athens pretty much hate me. Um, so no doubt we're going to find conflict with uh, Macedon and Egypt, which means this campaign ought to get interesting. I do intend to do the Apache's uh, quest, conquer whoever's in Carthage. We'd hoped it would be Carthage, but of course they got killed, and then eventually evade Britannia. It's just that that stuff is going to have to come a little later in the campaign, so don't think that I've forgotten it. I absolutely have not. Um, oh, and Ekbatana was able to defend itself once again before this army got here, with a few levy pikes, just absolutely crushed a Persian army. It's pretty entertaining, actually. So this is the army that had been in Samandar. I'm going to train a few more units into it on the next turn. Uh, I was able to uh, take out the Kidri, or Kidri, however you say that. So you can see their settlement there being converted over. This army is on its way back to Dura, and I'll probably use it to come over here to Seleucia and take out the Persians, and then that way I can continue my push against their last four settlements here. Their, their last major remaining settlements are Seleucia and Persepoli. Um, but they have a couple of smaller ones here at Sherax and uh, Gore as well. Hopefully not named after Al Gore. <laughs> Had to throw that one in there, folks. Couldn't help it. Um, in any case, um, we will just get back to things. I don't have any more money left, so let's check for upgrades, which there is one here on this champion. And he has quite a few upgrades. Somewhat impressive, actually. Um... I want to make him better at coercion and slaughter, which is a very handy... Ooh, he can have more military training experience, though, too. I really need him to be good against enemy agents first, and then the military training will be secondary. So that shouldn't be a big issue there. And I don't see any others at the moment. 
sorry. I just remember that commercial I made on a Rome video a long time ago where I advertised Pericles Peasants. So I have to change the name of this army to Pericles Peasants. I don't know why I don't ever change my army's names that often. I did in my, uh... Oh, we gotta alter this one too. We can't have the Servants of Sharon. It's gotta be the Servants of Patchy. Alright. And... The Spears of Ares. You just flip a couple of words there and it's the Spears of Ars. Um, which I don't really curse, but I have to admit it's kind of funny because that city is on the map and gets used quite frequently. So, uh, let's think of another name for these. I never think of the best stuff, but let's say, uh... I remember when I had, uh, it's like Satan's Spears or something was one of my units on, uh, Shogun 2. Let's see, um... Uh, oh, we need to come up with a good name here, so... Apache's uh, Pointy Patrol, I guess. Not that great, but, uh... There we go. Alright. At least my guys have stupid names for the most part. We don't want to forget the Heralds of Triton. We can't leave them out of this embarrassing names. And, uh, I think as in my one with Lionheart, I'm going to have to name these guys the Seasick Peasants. I'll, uh, shamelessly reuse it. I don't even know if I spelled peasants right. I'm an engineer, folks. I can't spell. So if I spell something wrong, let me know. Just like on my thumbnail the other day when I screwed up and put Erperus instead of Epirus. Er. <laughs> and I changed it, actually. I've changed the thumbnail. But uh, YouTube, for some reason, when you upload a thumbnail, it goes on instantly. But then if you want to change one, it takes YouTube like the better part of like two weeks to change that thumbnail off, which is pretty hilarious. I mean, it's like, what's the difference? How can one take a long time? One of those little quirky things about YouTube. So if you screw up a thumbnail, you're going to be stuck with it forever until someone at YouTube wakes up or sobers up, whatever it is, and decides to switch it back. <laughs> of course, YouTube might censor my video for me saying what I just did, but I like YouTube. Obviously, I get to make my videos here, but sometimes they just seem a little bit goony. All right, so what do we got? We have actually a pretty superior force of Persians here, but it's giving me quite good chances for whatever reason. I don't know why. They, um... I guess I do have a pike advantage. I don't really have a sword advantage, and I definitely don't have a skirmish advantage. But I did get two slingers in this army with a couple of eastern spearmen. So this will be interesting. Uh, part of me would almost really just like to sally out against these guys, so I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to hit sally forth. They still have to attack me. It just means that I'm choosing to come outside my city walls to face them. And part of the reason I'm doing that is because it'll just be easier for me to, to get at their skirmishers whenever I have a, a wide open field to maneuver. I feel like if it ever comes into a maneuvering battle, I can usually <laughs> defeat the AI, whereas if it if it comes into a spot where you're stuck, sometimes the AI is good at taking advantage of certain little situations, so definitely figure this will be better for me to get out here on open ground. It's been real encouraging, though, to see the Persians, um, as they've faced me the last few times, actually bringing pretty sturdy armies. Thorax, Thorax swords are not elite units, and neither are Thorax pikes, but they are very sturdy, and if you look at the balance of this army, it's missing a couple of cav units. But otherwise, quite well balanced, so it's um, it's giving me some hope that the, the changes that came in patch 9 are actually... Uh, and I'm actually going to bunch my pikes up into pretty thick ranks. I've heard that if your pikes are in a thicker formation than enemy pikes, they tend to win if they're the same stats. So we're going to check that here. I don't know if it's true or not, uh, but I'd like to find out. So I'm going to try and put mine into a bunched formation so that... Um, I'll spread my swords out a little more. And some of you have asked me about formation attack in my Caesar and Gaul campaign. And the formation attack is definitely different now. I thought I had mentioned this in some videos. Maybe I didn't. But um, it, it's good sometimes, and it's good not sometimes. So I like to use formation attack when I want my men to last longer or to hold longer. Um, and then I tend to not use formation attack whenever I want to get a powerful charge or a flank charge. I don't want my men to keep formation when they're charging from the flank as a line. I want them to, to hit the full enemy flank, uh, if that makes sense. So that, that's kind of what I'm aiming for. I'm going to put my general um, actually on the right. It's a more traditional place for a general. And then I'm going to put my two uh, Bactrian noble horse, which are pretty heavy cav. Um, pretty really good cav, actually, over here. You can see they're just a fantastic melee cav. Um, maybe not always that great in multiplayer because of their cost, but still a very good unit in campaign. Some some things that are not all that great in multiplayer are actually pretty good in campaign, and I think that's one thing you have to learn as you play Rome 2. 
Alright. I'm gonna move up. The enemy's gonna have to move on me. And look, they do have their guys in fairly blocky formation. I don't know if they do that to copy you, or if that's just the way they like to deploy from the get-go. I don't know what the reasoning is there. I don't think I don't see their... Okay, here's their thorax pikes, and they are in pretty deep ranks, so it's probably a good thing that I put my guys in the deep ranks. Alright, let's uh, take a look at the overall map. So there's kind of some natural flank protection right here and here in these little villages. So I think what I'm going to do is just line up my, my pikes in the center. And then, oops, I'll use my uh, thorax swordsman to hit the flanks. And then I'll come wide with my cav like this. So that'll be my, my general strategy. And I need to take it off of the little paint tool here. And since they're advancing on me with their swords mainly up front, I'm actually going to reform my pikes into a wide formation because there's no need to have them into a dense formation against the swords. What are these units here? Persian light archers. I'm going to go start chasing them with my eastern spearmen. And I'm going to sneak these cab into the flank here. Okay, I've widened up to meet the Persian advance. I'm going to let them come towards me a little. I'm going to slam into this flank here. Actually, there's an enemy Median cab back here that's ripe for the picking. Bring my cataphracts up. So you can see my pike's going to do a fantastic job of holding. The main losses they'll take is when the enemy is throwing their javelins. I'm going to target their pikemen with my slingers. Okay, they've turned their pikes to face me over here. Let's just keep taking out their... Uh, I'm going to chase these archers once again with my lighter unit. My front is holding extremely well. And I have enemy pikes chasing me back here in the back. So I'm going to have to get my cav clear for a minute. In fact, they're trying to engage me with this median cav. I want to pull that median cav further out, so I'm going to retreat for just a moment. Broke through there, and see, watch here, if I go out of formation attack and run a flank charge against their thorax swords, my guys will kind of break up and, and enter combat a little more cleanly here and get a better flank charge. I'm going to hit those. Um, I've got that Median cab engaged with my Noble Horse. Let's come take out this Archer real quick. And I'm wasting time here. I'm actually going to come out of formation. And, well, actually, let's try and fix their own pike with mine. I've got their Median Cav engaged with my Bactrian Noble Noblehorse, and their pikes are slowly coming to reinforce, but having a hard time getting there. The men are wavering. That's just an Eastern Spear unit, so nothing of concern. Okay, so here I want a good charge, so I took my men out of formation attack. Okay. I'm going to come down here and engage this, uh, engage this enemy pike unit. And I'm going to have to pull back once again here. I don't like doing this because it's going to give me a few losses, but i got to get away from that enemy pike unit that's following me. And over here we're crushing the uh, the Persian thorax swords. They leave their units in formation attack a lot, so that's why their, their thorax sword lasted so long there. Okay, they've pulled out of that fight. Over here, my pikemen are holding their own against these guys. Let's pull up a flank. I'm kind of reacting slow on some of these things, but... Let's use these thorax swords to help out flank here. And then we'll use my cataphracts to help crush these guys from behind. Alright, so flanking with pikes takes a little while and it takes some micro. Here we've got a thorax pikeman trying to pin down my units. Okay, my thorax swords got these uh, thorax pikes. So now I can click an attack order with both those units and sandwich them. I got around that pike unit right there, and then watch, I'm going to get into the back of this thorax swordsman with the trample charge. And the enemy general just died, so this will probably be the death blow here with my cataphracts. Oh yeah, beautiful hammer and anvil strike. So able to defeat the Persians pretty decisively there on open ground. The, uh, the AI is sometimes a little bit timid about attacking your pikes from the front. I'm kind of thinking the main reason they did it here was because they had a numbers advantage. 
And uh, it's kind of interesting to, to see why they did that, because like I said, a lot of times they try and avoid that engagement. Of course, I was able to outflank and get the better engagement. Uh, if they're if they're kind of closely, their more closely formed pikes would have tried to engage me front on, they would have done well against my more spread out pikes, but the AI did not. And of course you can see here they took massive losses, escaping with only a few pike units and one archer. So that was a fantastic run for us. Oh, they brought another army up right behind us. Good thing they didn't bring it up to reinforce. It seems like that would have made more sense, but I'll have more slingers on the next turn as well. Those eastern spears, as you can see, were pretty helpful for running down um, enemy missile units since the uh, they're faster. And we're getting a lot of agent play down here. I'm running short on cash, unfortunately. We need to repair Samandar, so I'm going to have to use pretty much all of my money on that. I don't know why I'm strapped for cash so bad. I have so many settlements. Um, maybe the buildings that I've chosen aren't the best. I, I guess I do have a, a decent number of armies right now as well. But uh, the best way to get some cash, to be honest, is going to be to lay the hurt down on on uh, Persia. So what I'd like to do, and this is going to be a bit risky, I'm going to go into uh, Force March. And I'm going to march along the road to this point so that I don't take any attrition, or at least minimal attrition. Some of you said, hey, you can micro your troops along the road. Um, I'm sure you can. As you all know, Air is notoriously lazy. Let's see. So, the Persians are going to make a run for Raga, probably. And they might well get it if I'm not able to reinforce. So, this is the army that I brought down from uh, Samandar. It's actually got some sweet chevronage going on. Even a gold chevron on those eastern slingers. It does need some more men, though. I lost some of my um, my men. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and reinforce Raga. If they go after Ekbatana, there's no way they can take Ekbatana, and this allows me to prevent them from taking Raga, hopefully which will cause them to retreat. If we can get the Persians to retreat... Um, right here, I'll use the blue line. If the Persians retreat this way, then that'll allow me to go on a counteroffensive from Raga down here to Persepoli, and then from Susa uh, to Sherax and then on to Gore, and then this army here will hit Seleucia. So if things work out, that's kind of my general plan. We need to try and get rid of some of these enemy agents. Um, someone tried to commit arson at Susa. Let's see what my manipulation chances look like. When you look closely at these things, so Tempt only has an 11% chance, but if you look at it, the positive outcome, yeah, I may have 11% chance, but you always want to kind of weigh out, which I haven't done a lot in the past, the positive outcome potential of each one. So if you look at this coercion, it's a 75% chance of a positive outcome, and a fairly good chance that the target defects, or at least gets stopped. So, I'm going to go ahead and take this chance. I am sure we... And see, we hindered him, which defection would have been better, but at least that particular agent probably can't act against me in the next turn. We'll see. If you look right here, it says this agent can't move or act, so we were successful. So, um, that helps out. And then up here, here's an Armenian spy. These guys should be gone because I took their settlements, but unfortunately they have some navy just starving to death, or army starving to death somewhere, which means that they still get to keep their spy, which is wildly frustrating, but we'll see if we can get their spy on a manipulation. I don't have enough to tempt, so I guess we'll just try a coercion. And once again, hindered the enemy agent at least. Probably should just try assassinating them just to get them out of my way, but will be alright. And it looks like my champion must have died up here. Um, both these agents are fairly good level. Uh, let's put one of them into this army so that it can level up some. And then this agent I'm going to put into their little counterintelligence mode just to try and gain some level with them. I don't have the money to buy any more agents. Hopefully my income will continue to go up. Uh, I I think I've pretty well constructed most of the buildings that I can. I need to build another temple here at Adumantu, or whatever this place is, but I'm going to finish this shrine to Zeus, which ought to help quite a bit. It, that province might potentially stabilize. Oh, and I don't have the money to repair this Hellenistic hamlet here, unfortunately. But, I mean, I'm just going to have to live with it. Just don't have the, the means to do anything about it at the moment. But I think we are gaining the advantage on the Persians. Uh, I do worry quite a quite a lot about Egypt, and um, but they don't hate me yet. I mean, they dislike me a great deal, but they haven't declared war. Neither has Athens, but they have declared war on Pontus, 
And Pontus is my ally. At least I believe they've declared war on Pontus. They have. And Pontus is my military ally. Um, so I really need to be fighting back against Athens. I have no interest in letting Athens or Macedon gain a foothold here. So let's go ahead and end this turn and see what happens. I'm going to move that army from the former Armenian territories up to uh, Mazaka, uh, Tarsus, or Samosata to try and reinforce the, the Pontians to see if we can help them out. Royal Scythians still running around up by Samandar. It's going to be hard to get rid of them entirely. Bithynia is not doing so well in the fight against Athens, and I can't imagine that moving troops away from your forward provinces where you're being assaulted is probably a good idea. The AI sometimes does that, where they think it's better to run away. Okay, Persians retreating over there just like I had hoped, and bringing that army around to threaten Raga, and then trying to march past Ekbatana to get to Gazaka. So that will actually... Exposed, political intrigue, they tried to assassinate... They wounded one of my generals. I haven't been paying much attention to uh, politics, but I have a little better understanding of politics now, and I need to find a way to uh, to do better, and I'm pretty sure I have some ideas. Let's see, a member of our family has run up considerable debts. His actions have brought disgrace on him and the whole family. I'm going to disown him. All right. And then, uh, let's see. I hate spending all my money on this, but I really must get rid of these enemy agents. I'm going to try an assassination just to get these guys out of here. Let's see, the Persians fortified outside Raga. And this army has gotten behind me and is going to make a run for Gazaka. Not sure whether or not I can defend it, because I only get two Eastern Spearmen and two Eastern Slingers. And they have a Thorax Pikes and some other units. I, I'm not going to be able to defend it. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to temporarily pull my forces away from where I'd like to be helping uh, Pontus against... Um, Pontus against Athens and these other cities. So that'll force these Persians to make a different choice, one that they probably don't like. And here, I wish to attack these fortified Persians. I don't think they're actually in reinforcement range of their own army right here. They're not. They're just sitting right outside of it. And this would allow me to kind of plug this pass here. I can't reach them on this turn. Now they're probably just going to march around me and go for Raga. That's frustrating. But they have ceased to threaten me at Susa with those armies, so I think that it makes sense for me to attack Persephone. Um, they have some armies here, and this might actually draw them in. Again, this army is not wildly strong, but it can hold its own. Susa might rebel because of some of the things going on there, but we'll try and hold on to it. As you can see, I've been researching a lot of stuff up the philosophy tree, which for Carthage is fantastic because it, it actually takes away a a whole ton of, um, uh, what do you call it, corruption and other stuff and really drives up your tax rate. It's a little bit different for Bactria, uh, you can see here, it, but it does increase my wealth a lot to be researching these things. Let's see if there's anything else that would be beneficial to me. Tariffs. I mean, it'd be nice to get rid of some corruption, but I don't see that, um, I don't see that Bactria really has access to that same stuff. As Carthage, I mean, I really think Carthage has a better overall research tree. This does take away corruption though to finish these overall groups, so I have reduced the amount of corruption while also driving up my conversion rate. So that's not a not a bad tree to stay in. It takes a long time to research these, but plus 40% wealth from culture in all regions, minus 10% political action cost, minus 7% political incident occurrence, plus 6 conversion. I mean, that, that kind of stuff is helpful um, because it, it makes my provinces happier. And although I'm foregoing military uh, research to to do it, I think that it ends up becoming worth my while. At least I hope so. Let's see. Pontus has not lost any ground over the last turn to to the enemy. Salamis. Uh, let's go ahead and. I wonder if expanding Salamis is really worth my while. I don't really know that we need to. Uh, I'd probably be better off to just build another temple here. Uh, let's see what we have. So I can't build the Sacred Grove, which is unfortunate because that one gives the most public order because I don't have the funds. 
I think I'm going to wait a turn and try and build the Sacred Grove. Um, here, this army can come out of Force March into No Stance, and we can actually make it to Seleucia on this turn. So the, uh, what, what army is this? The Brothers of Patchy can now attack Seleucia, which would be great. This will take some of the fire out of the Persians. It's giving me a pretty fantastic chances of winning this, which is understood. So I guess I'll go ahead and auto-resolve it, since that makes the most sense at this point. Rather than fight it, I'll probably end up taking more losses from the Arrow Towers. And uh, I actually think I'm going to go ahead and raise the settlement. I haven't done this a whole lot in some of mine, but uh, it gives you like a terrible one-time penalty to raise things. But uh, it kind of at least gets rid of all the enemy buildings and ought to make this a little simpler. So I'm going to go ahead and drop a, a temple there and with my last bit of money. And we'll go ahead and end this turn and see what happens. Oh, I have an unassigned kill with bias. Sounds like this person's a little bit biased. Uh, you're stupid, air. I know. I know, folks. I make retarded jokes. That's one of the things that I do. So... The Persians forced back into only three settlements. There's the stupid Drangianians, man. These guys need a beating from my Carthage campaign. So, let's see what happens here. Macedon and Egypt. Didn't see any particular moves up there. It's not showing me moves from Pontus or Athens or Macedon, but that doesn't mean nothing's happening up there. Ha! <laughs> the Royal Scythians back for more. This time they've come with... Uh, fewer missile cav and I can actually just auto resolve this which I'll probably do because that's kind of a waste of time as well I don't know it's giving them pretty fantastic chances I don't know though I mean all I have is Eastern Spearmen so maybe they have fantastic chances it's kinda of hard to say I'll just fight a balanced stance looks like it gives me a pretty sturdy chance of victory and uh, we'll just kill the captives and that does leave the Scythians in a hurt they're gonna have to run off and start suffering attrition I think I have a military access agreement with Araya, or Arya, or whatever that place is, so no big deal to see them moving through my land at the moment. At least I hope not. They still seem very friendly towards me. If they backstab me, that would be terrible. Is Partheva going to backstab me? I think I have a military access agreement with them as well, but it's quite possible they might try and turn on me because they don't have the friendliest feelings towards me. Alright, here comes Persia to attack this army, which I kind of hoped for, to be honest. I do have these two Ballista. They have some Median Cav here. Um, my Bactrian Noble Horse is better. Of course, my uh, Cataphracts are better still, but they have some decent upgrades here. Look, they got some silver upgrades in some of these units. Uh, overall, though, I just outpower these guys, I think. Um, so this ought to be fun. We'll fight this one, and that should be the end of this episode. The Battle of Ragao almost like ragu so this is like the battle of spaghetti sauce oh air you're killing me and i'm you yeah i know i'm, I'm sorry buddy sorry i'm talking to myself kind of like smeagol here but at least not quite so creepy i hope somewhat dusty or foggy day in the desert here this might work out advantageously though um this ground right here is pretty solid ground to just fight on it's it's pretty open and even I'm going to spread my pikes pretty thin once again. Not always the best way to use them, but I'm not too worried about it in this case. I'll leave this unit of hillmen behind to help out any flank that starts to become threatened. Got my own slingers here uh, up front. And let's take them... Actually, I'll leave them in skirmish mode just in case I forget to, to pay attention, which we all know that happens, don't we? Air forgetting to pay attention. No, he would never do such a thing. Actually, I'm going to leave those ballista up front and let them start firing, and I'll move my other troops forward. And let's go ahead and hide the old cataphracts over here. And let's go a little further over here and hide this Bactrian noble horse there. Start the battle. And um, let's go ahead and... I left my uh, ballista on fire at will for the moment, just in case the enemy comes within range. And... Enemy reinforcements approaching. Okay. Enemy reinforcements approaching. Oh no. Uh, I had turned the announcer off for a while, but 
I decided it might be a good idea for me to leave the announcer on, in case we have one of those scenarios where Air completely forgets that his general is being attacked, or is wondering whether or not I've managed to kill the enemy general, so as much as that guy is a nuisance, I'm going to leave him on. Every now and then he does say shameful display, not quite as wonderfully as it was in Shogun 2, but he does say it. And, and that's important, folks. That's kind of become a critical thing in Total War. You really need someone to be screaming shameful display whenever something's going down. Here comes my opening ballista shots, probably aimed at these Persian light archers, but the misses will hit these uh, thorax swords. I'm going to let them fire at will. You can hold alt and see me attack certain areas, which is also fairly effective, but because of the somewhat columnar formation that these guys are marching up in, my ballista will still get plenty of kills, so I'm going to just let them let loose. My slingers ought to be able to make short work of their archers, and the Persian reinforcements are coming from over there. I'm going to show you the above map so you can see what's going on. I don't have too long to show you, but I'll show you. And my cav are hidden on the flanks, which ought to leave them in a perfect position to pounce. Okay, let's focus fire this weak unit of Persian archers first. Our hidden units have been discovered. Repurpose these onto those pikemen. Is that guy's name Uber? No, Ubar. <laughs> His name was Uber. That was going to be entertaining. We await your orders. Okay, we took out one Persian archer unit. Let's see if we can get another. Oh man! Units have been discovered. Okay, I just got nailed. Oh, what is that? A horse skirmisher. Need to do something about it. And let's pull my slingers back. Take them off a of skirmish. Cataphracts out. Factory and noble horse to into those median cav. Bring these guys this way. My pikes. Oh, what are you, what are you doing, slingers? Go! Okay, and they've got another median cav coming around over here. I have to charge it with my cataphracts. And they're going to back it up with another median cav, but I'm going to get their archers over here with my noble horse. These pikes did get outflanked, so I'll try and turn them to face the enemy. My general managed to charge these median cav and is absolutely destroying them. Let's halt my ballista for now because I don't know where it's aimed. Uh, it looks like it's still aimed at the enemy general, which is not a bad target. Okay, I got my pikes turned over here. You see how I forced a of movement order on my pikes. They take some casualties, but it's the best way to get them turned and facing where you want them. That median cab's getting destroyed by my, my general. There's another one coming in from over here. And what will turn? Uh, war cry. Trample charge. And... I thought I could use push against that. Guess the not. Enemy general is dead. Okay, enemy general is dead. At least according to Mr. Announcer Man. Their infantry is getting destroyed front on by my pikes. Uh, okay, let's see. Use my slingers, see if we can hit those thorax pikemen in the back. And, whoa! Got some archers over here I need to take out. Wasn't paying attention there. Let's. No, no, no. Whoops, had the wrong unit selected. Alright. I'm gonna just go ahead and save the ammo and these ballista for a minute, just in case I decide I want it. Yep, there's some targets of opportunity right there. And I'm going to have to pull off the attack on those archers. How did these Median Cav end up living? Oh well, they won't live for much longer, as Hellenic Cataphracts will cut them down. Median Cav is a decent unit. And yep, the Ballista Fire ought to be getting these guys here momentarily. As you come on. Let's pull up these two pikes. They're a little damaged, but with the support of some cav, I think we can make them effective. Uh, my slingers need to be pulled back. Let's reconsider how I'm going to purpose them. Let's come around here and... Uh, move around this way. And let's use our slingers to take out that enemy... Pike unit there. Pike man, ready. By your command. The enemy general is dead. Okay, these thorax swords aren't braced. I'm actually going to go ahead and charge them with my uh, Bactrian nobles. We await your command. And then I'm going to halt my ballista because they're firing towards my own cavalry. I was able to basically destroy those Persian light archers real quick. My pikes are getting hit over here, and these guys didn't position right. 
their thorax pikes were in deeper ranks and they're better than my pikemen in general. I did get a nice rear charge there on their thorax pikes when my guys routed. I'm gonna have to keep an eye on that. If they're able to turn around and face me, it's gonna be bad. But otherwise, my guys ought to do okay there. And let's bring in another pike to assist. Okay, how's my melee cap doing over here? Doing all right, actually. I'll try and route that one unit. Ooh, actually, right here. Well, their morale is actually starting to falter. And we'll just get a little pike sandwich going right there. Steady. Yeah, these guys got pike sandwiched. Uh, all right, so we were able to defeat the Persians pretty decisively there. We didn't take too much damage to any one unit. And I thought overall that turned out quite well. You can see how easily my Cataphract General destroyed that Median Cav, but how much longer it takes for my Bactrian Noble Horse, which is still superior to the Median Cav, to kill it. And it's just that, that bonus versus Cav and that charge is substantial when it comes to uh, getting rid of enemy cavalry. Plus, the Cataphracts have a huge amount of health. Oh, I lost a Pikeman. Crap. It's Silver Chevron, too. Man, that sucks. Wish I hadn't done that. But, at least we beat back the Persians. They're going to come attack Ekbatana, or at least try and besiege it, which is absolute and utter foolishness. They'll never accomplish it. Alright, the Bactrian Pain Train has leveled up. My income's gone up a little bit. Um, I'll read those messages here in a second. Let's see. Can I recruit units here? If I had money. Or, no. Settlement's under siege. So Ekbatana's under siege. <laughs> You really think this pathetic rabble can handle Ekbatana's garrison, which is a Bactrian Royal Guard, Persian Light Archer, three spearmen, two slingers. Well, I know one thing they can't handle is this other massive army that I can bring in behind them. Um, let's see if I have a, an agreement with, the, with Partheva. I think I do. Speak, my friend. Yeah, there's military and access, so even though they're not, you know, my friend necessarily, they're... Uh, we're gonna put these put these guys down. Well, man, I want to, but not sure if I can. I mean, I do have the skirmishing advantage, and I have this Bactrian guard. Their thorax pikes would be pretty... Ugh got those light peltists though. I don't know, that's a dangerous situation for me there, folks. I don't think I can do that as much as I want to. Uh, let's just come and attack these guys from behind. Force the Persians out of here. Ekbatana can hold out for two more turns anyway. And then this army really um, doesn't have to go anywhere on this particular turn. Susa rebelled. Fantastic, whatever. Doesn't matter. Median rebels over here, so Seleucia rebelled as well. Let's see if we can convert that. The problem is I don't have a lot of money each time I raise these things, unfortunately. Let's see where else I need to... Okay, Sousa has been repaired, but these rebels are probably going to come after me. Let's see if we can take out these Median rebels real quick, who are raiding, because that's going to make a lot of unhappiness in the province. We need to just kind of move on to Cherax anyway, so let's let's just go ahead and jump out, knock out these Median Rebels. Uh, just auto-resolve this, because I have a fantastic chance. And, hey, you know what? I told you all I was out of time for this episode, so I'm out of time for this episode. Anyway, Air of Carthage signing off. Don't worry, I'll, for, I'll remember to save my game.